Hello everyone, my name is Scott Urbis and today we're going to take a look at the Civil Labeler tool that's available in the 2021 Release 1 version of Open Roads Designer. Now some of you have probably already seen the Civil Labeler tool. It's a new tool that they've added in 1010 that supports complex labels computed from one or multiple targets so we can label crossing alignments now, which we couldn't do before, um, elevation offset along plan elements with stationing relative to the center line, so those types of things. Um, labels can include many types of leaders and frames around the text, and they're also dynamic and associative. So it basically takes, uh, you know, we had the place note tool before the place label tool before, but that one was kind of limited in some areas, so that's why they came up with this one. It's a little bit more robust. Um, and has some of the uh, same functionality as the uh, the legacy uh, labeling tools that we had in the past. So you can see here the dialog box is pretty laid out pretty straightforward. Um, we got some sample labels here of just some of the things you can do. You can label some points with station and offset. You can label intersecting stations or intersecting alignments with the uh, relative station equal to one another with the names and whatnot. Um, you can label station offset elevations of points and elements. So I'll get into how you actually do some of this stuff show you how to set it up and how it works. Um, these are just some default ones I made. Um, Dan Ahern did spend a lot of time developing some uh, different label types that he delivers inside the uh, Civil Labeler XML file, which we'll talk about. But that's just a brief overview. So the labels themselves, the different types of labelables, um, they're all stored and managed in a user customizable XML file that's delivered with the uh, the workspace. So it's called Civil Labeler Imperial.xml. If you're working in the Imperial Training and Examples workspace, the metric one would have metric in there as well. Um, and then the layout of the actual tool is basically two panels. On the left here, you have the folders and the different labels label types with their names. And then on the right side of the dialog, you have the, the various settings for each of those label types. So let's jump into the software and see if we could do a live demo. So I'm gonna jump over here into some plan and profile sheets that I've already created. And I'm gonna start off inside of the drawing model. So if we go down here, you can see I've got various sheets created. I'm gonna start labeling inside of my drawing model. Right, that's typically where we want to tell folks to do their labeling, right? So to launch the uh, Civil Labeler tool, you can just simply go over to Drawing Production, go up to Civil Labeler. Again, this is just a tech preview tool. So this is a dialog. Obviously, you can expand and collapse it and resize it and whatnot. I'm just going to go through a couple of examples here, just how it works, how, how you place the labels, and we'll get into a little bit about how it's set up, how you can customize the labels and create your own types of labels. So let's just take a look at, you know, one of the, the big um, features of this tool is the ability to label an intersecting alignment station, right? So you've probably seen this in Derek's videos. I'm just going to go over here to the intersection um, folder here. I'm going to select intersecting geometry station with the name. What we want to do is we want to label the intersecting station where these two alignments come together. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select that. You can see the here's the settings for this particular label, how they've already been set up and defined in the XML file. And I'm just going to select place. You're going to notice in the lower left corner of the screen, it's going to say identify first intersecting geometry. So you can select the main line center line here. And then notice the prompt changes to identify second intersecting geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and select my side road. And then it attaches the uh, the label to your cursor, and then you can just place it right into the screen there. And then right click to get out of the uh, the command. So just like a lot of our other tools. So here, this one here is is one Dan set up, and I went in and I customized customized it. I added station in the front of it, I added the center line symbol, and I added the equals at the end. So you can see there gives me the station on London Road as it's equal to the station of Church Road. So. Very nice uh, feature there that I don't think we were able to do before with the old labeler tool. Now, some of the other things we can do, not just label intersecting uh, elements, uh, we can label things along geometry. We can label the names 
of geometry. So you've probably seen this in Derek's video as well, where you can come and place the name on a particular element. So I'm gonna come over here and just label the, um, the center line alignment there. And there's also rotation options here. There's many different rotation options for how you wanna orient your text. A lot of the ones I've been using have just been like view horizontal. Um, so you could play around with these and pick the one that you want. So I'm just gonna place that right there like that. Uh, if you're looking for something a little bit more robust with like the centerline symbol in it, if you go over to the geometry folder, we have one here, it's called centerline construction. And you can say place, select the uh, reference geometry there, and then place it something like that. You can do that type of label. So there's many different types of labels set up in here. And again, you can customize any of them to your liking. Um, so not only can we annotate the elements themselves, we can also annotate some points. So we can just do some basic station and offset type of labels as well. So I could come in here and say place, and I can just pick some point even from some element. It's gonna say identify a baseline geometry. So this is our reference. That's where it's gonna be computing the station and offset from. That's gonna say identify elements to label. I'm just gonna pick that point right there. Just place a station and offset right there. Now we can also place a station and offset and an elevation from a point. Now the elevation can be uh, derived from a terrain, from a corridor, it can be from projected geometry, um, or, or it could be from an element that has a profile. So for example, if I wanted to label you know, the beginning point of this ditch with the station offset and elevation of this ditch line here, I have one that I've created here. It's a custom one that I made. And I want to come in here and say place. It's going to say select center line geometry. So I'm going to select that. It's going to say select element to label. So I want to label this ditch there. It's going to say identify point on element to label. I want to label this very beginning point there at the station and offset elevation. So I'm just going to come, and come in there and place that. And that gives me the station and offset and the elevation of that particular um, ditch line there. So it's pretty easy to use um, and it will function in plan profile and cross-section views. So it works the same way in all those different contexts. So it's just kind of a real easy way to uh, place your labels. Um, another cool function is that when you label the points, you'll notice that um, in the setting dialog box here or in the settings, there's an option to use a selection or a fence. So if you have like a group of points and you want to label a bunch of points, you can just place a selection set or a fence around those points and it'll do the labeling. So I could come in here and just use my selector tool and just you know, grab some of these points, put them in a selection set like so. And we can label station and offset on all those points just by using a selection set or fence. And I'll just say place. I'm going to say identify baseline geometry. So we'll go ahead and select our center line of London Road and left click to accept. And then you can move your cursor around to kind of figure out where how you want to place these inside the name boundary or wherever you're going to do. Just go something like that. Another thing you can do as well, and this is a, a pretty nice feature, is we come up here into the, the linear folder and we take a look at placing some elevations along geometry. We have the option to place some elevations at a specified increment along a piece of geometry. So I'm going to come over here and place um, some elevations along this um, center line of my uh, side road here, which is Church Road. So this one's set up to place those every 25 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and place those. It's gonna say identify geometry. So I'll select that. Kind of a cool feature. So that's in a nutshell, kind of just like the very basics of how you place the labels. Again, it's not too difficult. We'll like to mention, you know, when you are placing labels, pay attention to the different locks down here. You know, you got the annotation lock and then the uh, Element association locks, you know, these work just like the ones in the uh, the other tools. So make sure you have those turned on because these are or can be dynamic and associative labels. So if things do move or you need to move things around, um, you can do that and still maintain the uh, the relationship there. The other thing you need to be aware of, aware about is how you move these labels, right? So if you want to move one, you want to select it like that and just kind of drag it like that. That's how you want to move them.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.